Here in my studio, I'm gonna build a unique laboratory that allows me to do science experiments to better understand my homestead. But there's one huge catch. My budget for this project is zero dollars. Luckily, I've saved every scrap from every project I've ever done. First off, let me be clear. I'm not delusional. I'm not trying to build some medical grade laboratory out of plywood and junk for my storage room. When I first got into homesteading, I thought it was just planting seeds and feeding animals and fixing things with duct tape. But it didn't take too long to realize if I wanted to get better at this life, I need to understand the science behind it. There's botany in the garden, biology in the livestock, plant genetics in the seed saving, and entomology. So much entomology. Honestly, there are bugs everywhere on the farm. Everywhere. What I want is one spot in the homestead where I can bring that curiosity together. A place to test seeds in different soils, to make organic fertilizers and compare their nitrate levels, and to share that learning with my kids while it still feels new and exciting to them. The good news is I have plenty of gear. Companies have been sending me stuff like this by the box load for years. But the bad news is I've been spending so much money lately on docks and koi ponds that I don't have any money to furnish this space. I don't want this to just be for video. I want to build a real laboratory where I can do real experiments that actually help me understand what's going on in my homestead. Since my budget is zero, I'm basically starting with a bunch of cast off junk from other projects. Do you remember when everyone was building those big shelving units in their garage and they used bins as big drawers and they just kind of slid out on these shelves and they had casters on the bottom? I was gonna build that too, so I bought the stuff, never did it. Luckily, still have the casters. I've got bin loads of propagation stuff and pots and tools. I've got plenty of plants. Most of those I rescued off the clearance shelves at big box stores. And then I've got this just bin of random hardware. All kinds of stuff in here. We got hinges, handles, poles, clasps, screws, more hinges, more hinges. At least no one can accuse me of being unhinged. I built this table for out here in the pool house months ago and it's worked out great, so I'm basically gonna go with the same design. All right, so the first thing I need to do is build kind of a giant rectangle. All right, let's get this screwed together. So I'm gonna build these into the bench, so I need to get a measurement of what size they are. All right, now that we have the frame, we need to cut the uprights, but for that, we need to figure out how tall the legs need to be in total. All right, I want them to come up to the same height as this windowsill, so that's 34 inches. This old decking is what we're gonna use on the surface, so that's an inch thick, a height of two two by fours, and the wheel is six and three quarters, and these bins with their lids on are about an inch and a half deep, so that means we want the whole thing to be about 34 inches. We need 24 and three quarter to the legs and the rest will be covered. All right, we're gonna need four of these. We had a couple of these lift assist hinges left over from when we did the boat dock, so we're gonna try to make use of these. All right, so we're gonna need a gap in the edge. So we'll put that there. And then we're gonna need one of these. This piece is definitely, definitely fighting me on going square. I'm not gonna lie to you, this thing feels pretty wonky, so I'll be pretty shocked if it sits level when I put it all together. A couple generations ago, every household had its own version of a homestead lab. Families passed down knowledge about soil, seeds, animals, and food, not out of hobby, but because survival depended on it. Somewhere along the way, a lot of that got lost. We stopped sharing those lessons around the dinner table, and the experiments that used to be part of everyday life faded out. So that's a big reason I'm building this space. I want my kids to grow up with that sense of curiosity and practical science, just like past generations did. And beyond my own family, I want to share it with our larger community online so the old cycle of knowledge and experimentation can start turning again. Not just here on the farm, but everywhere people are paying attention. 
This thing is so wobbly, I'll be absolutely shocked if I flip it over and it's level. All right, here goes nothing. Oh yeah, that's super wobbly. That's the corner. Feels like the easiest way to fix it is gonna to try to force these back into square. All right, this may be a stupid idea. I've got this old decking from when I built the dock outside the cabin. Watching my videos, you might think I've got this homestead thing all figured out, so just remember, two out of five of my ideas end in either smoke or apologies. So yeah, this whole thing's completely out of level. I unscrewed all the screws out of the top except for one, and the bottom is sitting pretty well now. So it's apparently the top that's screwing everything up. So we're gonna try to screw this back in with a level and see if we can't solve the problem the simple way. Cross your fingers because the last thing you want on a table is for it to be all wonky. All right, the top is still level. Looks like the wheels aren't rocking at all. That's a pretty good fix. All right, so we're gonna put these into here. It's pretty snug, but it, I kind of wanted it to be. All right, now I just screw the hinges into the back here. I had these hinge arms left over from when I did the dock. Let's see how they work. It's pretty good. That's a little wonky though. So I have handles and I have poles. But I think really what I'm just gonna do is go old school and just use a simple hole. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Over the years, I've been doing little experiments all over the farm compost test here, soil mixes there, jars of mushroom experiments pushed to the back of a shelf. Because my social media grew, sponsors even started sending me free gear to try out. I know, I'm really lucky to have it all. I am so aware what a unique privilege it is to get to try out all these brands at no cost, but without a real place to set it all up, it just turned into clutter. It wasn't doing anyone any good, and I hate being wasteful. That's why now feels like the right time to build this lab. Not because I need something fancy, but because I need focus one table where I can pot plants or run experiments, one shelf for notes and samples, one place on the homestead to keep track of it all. All right, so that's one table down. This is gonna be our potting table. You can open this up, there'll be soil in here so I can pot from it, space over here to work on, space to keep our tools. All right, these are the zip ties I used on that chicken feeder project. Let's get some of this stuff cleaned out of here. Got some dead plants over here. Let's say I had to repot something and I wanted to get rid of the old soil. I put the old soil into the left bin, I get new soil out of the right bin. This here is actually the first set of grow shelves I ever built. So this is back in the old house when I was just starting to get interested in plants and I would grow succulents on this thing and man, I thought it was so neat. You know, in a very real way, these shelves are what started this entire homestead. The shelves turned into a container garden, which became an in-ground garden, which turned into a whole farm.
we got the shelves in place. Let's turn these on. These are really cool. They're magnetic. This thing needs a cleaning. I have a kit for that. All right, I got the shelves set up. First thing I want to do is move in the plant so that they're getting some light. Well, considering we're going to be doing experiments on here, there's something I felt we needed. I got this last year when I was learning about mycology. I'm actually going to be setting up my boom room, which is a Martha tent for growing mushrooms up in this space too. Just thinking how I want to build this other bench and what I'm going to use it for. I have a bunch of these. These are left over from when I built the dock. I have a little bit more of this decking from when I did the deck over by the cabin. I have tons of two by fours left from the dock build because I didn't use nearly as many of those as I thought I was going to. Most people start with a plan. I start with a pile of lumber and a vague sense of optimism. I don't want to block the door with it. Although. To be honest, like this one doesn't open. So, I open up the door, walk into the studio, close it, and then like immediately right here is countertop. That feels a little bit imbalanced. All right, so down in this corner here, what it first off, I built this into the other bench so it wasn't taking up space. For the record, I talk to myself like this even when there's no camera. All right, I think I'm onto something. I need to start with four pieces cut to 48 and a half inches. And four cut to 36. And six pieces cut to 22. All right, it's getting super late and I am super tired, but I really want to finish this. So I'm just going to try to push through. Somewhere between when I was a kid and now, I lost that sense of wonder and learning. Back then, everything felt magical. Discovering how things worked, asking questions, testing out ideas. But over time, school turned it into something to pass, something to get through instead of something to enjoy. Out here, that's changed. On the homestead, learning feels alive again. It's not abstract, it's practical and it matters. The way soil holds water, how compost creates heat, why certain plants thrive together. These are all lessons that make a real difference every single day. But what amazes me most is how many of these skills just aren't taught in schools anymore. That's what this lab is really about. I wanna bring back that spark for me and my family. Hopefully I can pass that whimsy along to others who wanna be blown away by how cool nature is too. That'll do. Really? <laughs> All right, 
right, second time's a charm. There we go. Man, that is perfect. Perfect. The shelves are in place, the plants got moved, these workbenches got built. Hey, I think we're ready for the big reveal. All right, are you ready for this? Come on, look at this. This is awesome. The furniture came out great. I've got this, I clad it in the outside with this decking. I put a little door in here to get to the garbage can. Real cute, real easy. You might've noticed I built it at a slightly higher level. That's so when I'm filming, let's say I'm talking about this little pothos here. We're all in one shot. I got these super cool shelves that got sent to me from Vigo Garden. They got these lights. Now these have different settings. So you can set them for seeds, leafy greens, fruits, herbs, or microgreens. And the really cool thing is they have different color spectrums to help them during their different parts of their life cycle. We went to our library. We brought a ton of cool books into this area that made sense for it. Microbe science, plant science, soil science, compost science, medicinal mushrooms, plant biology. Anything you can need to do science experiments or understand the science of what happens on your homestead. It won't be much of a lab without sciencey stuff. We already told you about the microscope, but we got a ton of cool stuff here. This is actually a essential oil distillation kit we got from Vivor. They sent us a ton of great stuff. Vivor made this kit and we use it to create essential oils out of things like lavender or lemongrass. The lemongrass essential oils we use to make our bee swarm traps. So we can grow that here on the property, create our own essential oils, catch our own bees, make our own honey all here. You guys saw this bench. We actually found this underneath the kitchen sink. It's a dish tray for drying your dishes off, but we never used it. It just sat underneath the counter. So I grabbed it, fits perfect in here to hold my tools. Let Us Grow sent us this farm stand about a year ago. It's a really cool hydroponic system, and it's really neat because it's actually made from ocean-bound recycled plastics. So that's very cool. I called them up, I let them know what we were doing. They sent us out these light rings to go along with the project we're doing here so we can grow indoors. Really grateful to them for that. This is the Boom Room 2 from Northport. We do mycology and grow our own mushrooms from scratch. It may seem silly to build a science lab on a homestead. I mean, after all, these are just boxes made out of two by fours and old decking. We've been running experiments for years out here by the koi pond and look how amazing this is doing. These plants are so lush and full because of everything we've learned. We have koi fish, we have Japanese trapdoor snails, there's dragonflies buzzing around, there's frogs in here, all kinds of little salamanders and newts. And we're taking those experiments and translating them to the big pond over there. For me, everything about homesteading is a learning process because I really have no idea what I'm doing. And that's why we're doing this whole new series called Homestead Science, where we'll be doing experiments and making videos about all the different findings we have. You wanna learn distillation and preservation? We got you. You wanna learn what different soil types do? We got you. You wanna learn hydroponics? We're gonna be building DIY systems. We got you. You wanna learn something I didn't mention? Just comment what you wanna learn. Like, follow, and share, and I got you. I really want to make this fun. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I got more I think you might like too.